Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi and in today's video I will be sharing with you guys how to make the long-awaited drum roll please X and Y shake no plugins needed tutorial. Now without further ado, let's get started. So normally before I add my shake, I usually add my flash, my velocity, and some other effects that I want to add to my edits. But for today, I didn't add anything just to show you a clear uh, look of what the shake looks like or how to do it. So uh, I just pre-composed my clips. Now we're going to add the motion tile. So go ahead and search that out. There you go. Add that to your first clip and also your second clip. Then you're going to change the output height to 200 and the output width to 200 as well. Enable the mirror edge, then go down and press P on your keyboard to open up the position bar. Then right click on position and click on separate dimensions. So we're only going to be using the X position for now since it's the X shake. The shake is going to be between 17 frames and we're currently doing the end shake. So let me just add a marker to where um, my timeline is because I already added my timeline at the right place. And so I basically just counted how many frames I needed for this. So now you're gonna keyframe the position to where it is, and then you're gonna go eight frames further. Before we continue, I just wanted to say that I don't have a specific amount for the position since I did try remaking one of my shakes with another composition, but it did not work since I don't know how to explain it, but let's just say it's not compatible. So what I consider doing is positioning your clip as you're liking or just copy what I do. So we're going to go to the right. So position your clip not too far, but kind of further than closer to your clip. Basically, just copy what I did. Here's an example. Now we're going to go four frames further and we're going to position our clip onto the other side gonna go at the end of your clip so basically five frames further I'm just gonna put it at four frames further to show you um, where to position your clip so now we're gonna go to the right um, right about here so less further than the first one there you go now I can put it at the end if it's not already done so this is the result trust the process okay because we're not done <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna add a directional blur. So go ahead and go into the effects and preset tab and search up directional blur. There you go. Then add that to your clip. Perfect. Now we're gonna put the direction to 90. Change the blur length to 296.3. There you go, perfect. So you can open the, the effects, uh, the directional blur tab. Then you're gonna put it here and you can easy ease them. There you go. Here's the result. So this is optional, but I do like to add some rotation sometimes. So what I'm going to show you is the rotation, how I do it. So you're going to go to the rotation. I don't even know how to put the rotation. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what I usually do is just put my timeline one frame behind and keyframe the rotation to its current rotation. And then I'm going to go eight frames further. So one, two, three. Four, five, eight. Perfect. And I'm going to add another keyframe to one. And then I'm going to go three frames further and I'm going to put it to negative two. Then I'm going to go again, three frames further and I'm going to put it to a negative five. And then I'm going to go at the end of my clip and put it to five. Then you can easy ease them. So highlight your keyframes and press F9 on your keyboard. So this is the result of the end X shake. I could even show you without the second clip so you can get like that out shake at the end of your edits. I always do that. I just love it. Okay, so next up we're going to do the X shake start. Since both of these shakes have the same settings, I would highly recommend you just copy and I'm going to show you where to paste them because the only thing that changes is where the keyframes are positioned. So without further ado, let's get started. Copy the last keyframe from your first clip onto the beginning of your second clip. So now you're going to do the same thing, but instead of going four or five frames forward, you're going to go three frames forward, paste, three frames forward, paste and then eight frames forward and you're gonna paste the last one that doesn't change so go ahead copy that go three frames forward and then paste and then one two three again copy and paste 
then copy and paste there you go so basically for the rotation none of the frames are going to change between the keyframes so we're going to do paste four keyframes further copy this under here and paste it then three frames forward then again copy paste then again three frames forward copy eight frames forward then copy and paste there you go so here's the final results of the egg shake and i can even show you without the first clip So yeah, this is what I do for my X shakes and uh, now let's go do the Y shakes. Also, I forgot to say, don't forget to enable these motion blur. This is important for the smoothness of this shake, okay? So don't forget to enable these, okay? I'm gonna start at the same place I was earlier. So there's going to be 17 frames between this shake. Don't forget to add your motion tile with 200 for the width, 200 for the height and mirror edge um, enabled. Now that we're back here, press P on your keyboard, then add a keyframe to the Y position to its position. Then we're going to go 8 frames forward. As I explained earlier, I don't have a specific amount for the position, so just go as you're liking or copy what I do. So now we're going to go downwards. So go down, but not too far, like about this. Then we're going to go 5 frames forward. We're going to go upwards, so go ahead and get it around here yeah perfect then go at the end of your clip and go right down this time go further down there you go about maybe a little less now you can easy ease them now we're gonna add the directional blur so go ahead and add that to your clip there you go now for this part the settings are going to be the same as earlier except that you leave the direction as it is so add a keyframe at the beginning of your shake then go at the end of your shake, then change the blur length to 296.3. There you go. Then you can open the effects bar and the directional blur bar to be able to see your keyframes. Then highlight them and easy ease them. And now we're gonna do the same thing as we did earlier. So we're gonna copy and paste onto the second clip. Press P on your keyboard to open up the position tab and then go ahead and copy the last keyframe of your first clip and paste it onto the beginning of your second clip. Now go three frames forward and copy the next keyframe and paste it onto the other clip. Then we're gonna go five frames forward. We're gonna copy the next one and paste it on here again. Now we're gonna go 12 frames forward. There you go. We're gonna copy the last one and paste it onto the second clip. There you go. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with the directional blur. So go ahead and copy the last keyframe of your first clip and paste it onto the beginning of your second clip. Now we're gonna go at the end of our shake and copy the end of our blur and paste it on here. There you go. There you go, guys. Here it is. Here it is. I could even do it without the second clip so it makes like a out shake, you know? Or vice versa, I could do a in shake, you know? Makes this effect. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. I really appreciate it and I appreciate your patience for this one because I know y'all have been wanting this tutorial for a while now. And thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. I I cannot believe it because I never thought I'd get this far. And last time that I did a video, I was at two or 300. And so, hello new people. And um, I wanted to give this video a little tip, you know? because I thought it would be cool. And so if you guys love flowy or smooth and movement edits and you've seen my edits and you love them, then I'm gonna share with you guys how I get that result. And um, it's really simple. All I do is add panning, a panning to it. I do have a tutorial on my channel if you guys wanna watch it. Um, yeah, it's basically it. I know there's probably other effects that gives that result of course but that's the main one you know and so yeah with that being said thanks again for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye